Hey there friends, what's going on? My name is Rabbit and welcome to episode number 15 of Let's Play Through Final Fantasy Origins, specifically Final Fantasy 1 on the PlayStation 1. So in our previous episode together, we did quite a bit of backtracking thanks to obtaining the Mystic Key. So I guess you could say we embarked on our own Mystic Quest. We revisited quite a few old areas and dungeons that we've seen in the past so that we could upgrade our equipment with all of the goodies that were hidden in those treasures locked away. So we actually have a few things that we need to go ahead and sell that we did pick up. Just some examples of rare items that we gathered from those mystic doors were things like the werebane or the rune blade, etc, etc. So lots of good stuff. But more importantly, to bring you guys back from where we had parted ways at the very end of our last episode, Rohit got dragged a little bit in Marsh Cave, and I had to sort of eat my words regarding the difficulty of that dungeon relative to the levels that we presently had, because he dropped like a fly. But as you can see, I'll go ahead and hop in the status page here. I went ahead and kind of set him up to where he could get a whole lot of XP to kind of shoot him forward past the rest of the team. I'm really going to try to keep him bulked up as much as possible because the enemies, they're just super jealous of that fantastic hat that he's rocking. I mean, I understand why, but we cannot have him continuously getting his butt whooped like this. So he is now at level 16 and you can see all of his stats now. I'll quickly scroll on over. You will see Tyrone will also be hitting level 16 soon. I wanted to bulk him up a bit as well, and I'll go ahead and rearrange my formation here shortly. I just slept and saved after doing a little bit of my grinding and hitting my training grounds. And you'll see here that Burl as well as Melvin are both pretty close to hitting level 16 as well, but they are now behind the curve compared to Rohit and Tyrone. So let's adjust our formation here. We'll put Burl back and Melvin back and Tyrone will kind of idle here at the bottom. And I think this should help out our crew a little teeny tiny bit. Hopefully anyway, that's kind of Kind of what we're aiming for. So we've got some stuff to sell. I guess we can just hop in here to go ahead and accomplish that. Hello, Provoka. It has been so long. Actually, it's not been so long for me, but it has been a while since you guys have seen this area. And actually, I'm not sure why I ran over this way. It would have been faster to head to the right-hand side, but that's okay. I'll just let you guys enjoy the peaceful and serene music that is playing. All right, let's get rid of the stuff we really don't need. So I mentioned to you guys that we will hold on to the werebane. It's not technically better than what we have equipped presently, but it does have some effectiveness against specific enemies. So we'll just hang on to it just to see if there will be a situation where we'll want to go ahead and equip it. Same situation for the rune blade. The falchion is Garbaggio, so we will trash it for 225 gil. I think we looked at the power staff. I'm pretty sure we looked at everything. We'll get rid of this. Ooh, it's worth quite a bit of gil, but I like what everyone has equipped. We can't use the steel gloves, so we'll toss those as well. The mithril knife can also go. We've got plenty of mithril gear equipped, and we are stacked in terms of our armlets, as everything stands right now because we did pick up a silver armlet, which is on Rohit, question mark. Yes, it is on Rohit. So that is it for stuff we can sell. As I already mentioned, I slept and saved without you guys so that we can go ahead and hit the ground running here in episode number 15. We now kind of are at a point where we're not entirely sure where we need to go, who we need to talk to, who even needs our help anymore. We helped out Matoya, we helped out that elf prince and that's what granted us the mystic key so all we kind of know is that we've got this key item known as the nitro powder and it is powder packed with explosive power but where we need to use it no one's really said so why don't we pull up our handy dandy map and just take a gander at areas that we've been to and areas that we've not been to that might be accessible to us now if you know i could actually learn how to use my map controls that would help quite a bit. So we're over here at Provoca. We've kind of exhausted so far all of the docks that we can land at except, huh, what is this one over here to the upper left hand side? Do you guys see that northwestern 
spot. It's like another port that we could head to. We've not been over there yet. And it looks like we'd be able to run a little bit southbound. And there's a cave that way. Well, it's the only place we've not messed with yet. And there's nowhere else for us to really go. So what do you say we hop aboard our ship and make a beeline for that section? I say it's worth a shot. We, we don't know what's over there, but... Let's see if perhaps there is a gentleman or gentlewoman. You know, we don't have to assume anyone's gender or preference or identity here. But we'll see if maybe, maybe they have some use for what we've got. Okay, I really don't want to mess with any of you. I don't think Fire 2 is going to get the job done. Let's just throw out an Ice 2. We're not going to play games with these fools. We'll just throw out a Hema. And I'll hit him with a Bolt 2 to the face. We're just going to rush on over. Hopefully we can sleep somewhere because I do believe we'll probably be using a few charges to get over there to that port. But we should be pretty tough and ready to tango with any adversaries that approach us. Need to dive in a little deeper here. I got to go down and around. I wish there was a way. I will just throw this out there. Not to nitpick, but it would be nice if there was a way to pull up a mini-map when you are kind of here on the overworld so that you don't have to continuously hop on over into the general map. So here we are. I'll go ahead and get into the smaller map here, or the more focused map. So this is that little pier or that dock that we've not visited yet. So why don't we, why don't we hop off here and see what is over in this little cave that's kind of south bound and oh goodness enemy strikes first but what do you guys even got nothing and i notice they're leaving rohit alone i guess they're a little intimidated by those bulging muscles rippling beneath that cloak over there understandable i wouldn't mess with him right now either to be totally honest with you we'll dish out a fire too melvin come on brah i need you to get it together I think Tyrone will be getting a level after this fight, or the one up. There we go. So he got 25 HP, which is very nice. Strength up, intelligence up, endurance up as well. So he is going to be a bit bulky, which is really what he needed. I feel like he was kind of falling off a bit as well. I'm more concerned about Rohit than anyone else because of just how I have him situated in my party. But I think he'll be okay, question mark? We'll see. I never can really say for sure, but I'm gonna try to set him up to withstand whatever awaits us and we'll just dish out some physical deeps, save our magic charges. See ya, bruh. Oh, maybe not yet. <laughs> I should not talk smack too soon. We've learned that lesson the hard way before. Sometimes it's better to withhold any trash talk until you know 100% what you're getting yourself into. And oh, Mount Dwergar, what on earth? Looks like there's a bunch of gnomes or dwarves. Rally ho, says this one. Okie dokie. Well, what's over here? Ooh, looks like some treasure. With the crystal eye, even a blind one is able to see everything. But I hear that dark elf Asto stole it from Matoya the Witch. Well, there's a bit of the clarification that we were seeking. Ooh, 575 gil. That's quite nice. We'll pick that up. And another 450 I was saying to you guys in our last episode that it seemed odd for Astos to have even had that, but hmm, I guess he stole it. I'm looking for the Levistone. You see, the Levistone can make anything float in air. Oh, so like levitation, I guess. What do you have to say? Huh? This noise? Oh, Grandpa Nellix at his rock busting again. <laughs> okay. An armlet can work as an armor. It protects you. Well, good to know. Thank you. What do you have to say, fella? Rally ho. <laughs> okay. Oh, these little gnomes or dwarves or whatever they prefer to be called. Huh? This noise? Oh, it's you saying the same thing as the other fella. So let me make sure I know where I'm going. With the crystal eye, even a... Did I talk to you or are you saying the same thing as this one? Oh, no, it was the one I think in that little door that had made that other comment. Well, that's okay if they want to recycle information. Good to know. Oh, this must be the grandpa who's working hard. How can I forge a sword worthy of leaving its name in history? Perhaps that legendary metal, Adamanite, Adam Adamantite, Adamantite, I don't know how the heck they want you to say that. Anyway, Adamanatatata can, <laughs> okay, uh, he's probably looking at me like, what on earth is wrong with you? That's only a sample, laddie, it's useless. 
Well, I just wanted to look, Grandpa. All right, he's got nothing else to say, so let's keep looking. The earth has begun to rot. From the west it comes. Ah, oh, so do we need to go westward? Huh, this noise, yeah, blah, blah, blah. What else do you guys have? I'm ready for some goodies. I'm always looking out for some treasure, though. I think that was everything up in that section. I'm kind of trying to make sure if there's anything hidden around. You're wearing a green hat, so I'm guessing I need to talk to you eventually. I think this loops around. Yes, it does. Let's hop in this door and steal whatever's in here. And woo, jackpot, mateys, jackpot. We got a tent. We've got a grand helm. I'm guessing we might not be able to wear that. A worm killer, probably another special sword like the ring blade. Mithril knife, another one to sell. A helmet. Mithril mail, probably for warriors. 575 gill and a cottage. Great. We'll take a look at everything that we picked up here once we're done talking to everyone and exploring. Huh? Ah, the nitro powder. Thanks a ton, youngsters. Now we can build a canal. Oh, so this is the fellow that needs the nitro powder. What great timing. Wait, where are you going? Uh, sir, I don't know if I authorized you to use this or even take it from me. There we go. There. Now we can blast this rock to smithereens. Oh gosh. Now move it. That wall will explode. So we better get out of here. You don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> I'm not one to stand there and take an explosion to the face. No thank you. And we're not going to pause on that. We're just going to keep on going, guys. Oh, what happened? <gasps> oh! Well, he did mention something about a canal. Is this going to allow us to have access to everything surrounding this area. <gasps> Ooh, very nice. Well, I'm happy about this. I cannot complain. Yay! New territories for us to explore await us, friends. Thank you, little dwarf fella. <laughs> He's so proud of himself. You know, it was our nitro powder. Oh, the great sea is calling me. Okay, that's it. You just blew it up and now he's out of here? Well, all right. I guess, you know, we'll extend our thanks and appreciation for his assistance because now we have a new area where we can go and I guess we grabbed everything that's really in here. So we'll circle back to the entryway we'll talk to all the dwarves one more time to see if they have anything additional to offer we'll check all of our little items that we picked up here see what we can equip see what we'll need to sell then we'll head out into the deep blue sea the earth has begun to rot yes from the west it comes you're probably not going to have anything else except talking about your adamantite Adamantite. I don't know. I think that's clunky. I don't like the way that sounds, but okay. With the crystal eye, yeah, 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 yeah. And don't run from me. I'm trying to talk to you. Have you spoken with Smith, the Smith? Is that the grandpa? Rally ho. Yes, rally ho to you as well, friend. Rally ho. Everybody respects Grandpa Nelik. He's a giant of a dwarf. I'm guessing he's the one that was smithing up there. An armlet, blah, 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 his armor protects you. Have you seen the canal? Grandpa Nelik did it again. Oh, Grandpa Nelik is the one who blew up that canal for us. And the Levistone. I hear the nitro powder was taken to a castle and was locked away inside a room. So I guess if you needed the pro tips, you weren't sure where to go and you were just kind of running around the world and, you know, figuring everything out blindly, you would get tips here regarding, you know, Astos having the crystal eye. You'd get tips regarding needing the nitro powder and it being hidden away. So with the crystal eye, even a blind one. Okay, so that's everything everyone needs to say. So let's quickly take a gander at all of the items we picked up. So the Grand Helm is a helmet that protects the entire head and it is not usable with our current party. So we will sell it. The Worm Killer, sword effective against dragons. So again, like I mentioned, similar to the Werebane and the Rune Blade, I'm guessing it will come in handy against certain enemies and areas that we'll be crawling through, but it's not something that I presently want to go ahead and throw onto Rohit. Now I will say it does look a bit better than the Rune Blade and the Werebane. 
but only by one attack point. So I'm I'm not going to prioritize this quite yet. Next, we've got another mithril knife. We've got a helmet, which is a light helmet. Nobody can wear it, so we will sell that. And I'm gonna call it from the mithril mail that no one will likely be able to wear this as well. Gleaming armor made of mithril silver. Oh, I'm full of crap. My red mage can wear it. So that is a great little pickup, especially considering everything that Rohit has been through. So we will happily go ahead and throw this on him. What would it be under? Well, Rohit, how do you put this on? It's not that. It's, oh, it is under your arm. Oh, that's what the dwarf was saying, doy, that your armlet functions like armor. But I could go ahead and swap that out for mithril mail. Ooh, we will see our evasion go down, though. You know, now that I'm looking at it and talking aloud with you guys, I don't think I want to equip the mithril mail. I mean, the defense is nice. But I guess you could argue if I give him the mithril mail, then someone else can use the silver armlet that needs it right now. I don't like that drop to evasion. I don't know. Let's just try it, though. I guess there's no harm in switching up our style, switching up our strategy. It's it's worth a shot, right? Let's just, let's just do it. And I will go ahead and give Tyrone the silver armlet because, woo, buddy, look at that increase of 11 points to defense. So I think that'll be okay. I don't know. I don't love that. I don't love that change, but we're going to just try it and see. And if it feels like it's not really having the impact that I want, then we'll take it off and we'll give him something else and it'll be fine. There's no need to be super rigid about what we're doing and how we're doing it. So let's experiment, friends. Let's keep an open mind. And all right, the canal is now officially open. So let's take a look at the map and even see what we could access if we wanted to. We'll switch to the more detailed view. Oh, and it does look like once we hop in our ship and pass through the canal, there is a town immediately westward of where we're at. So I will go ahead and part ways with you guys. I guess we can go back to the ship together while I'm saying my goodbyes. And when we rejoin one another in episode number 16, we're going to go explore that brand new town. We'll see what's kind of going on. Maybe some stuff's popping off. Maybe there's someone who needs our assistance. Maybe nothing's popping off and it'll just be a place where we can rest and gather more information about where we need to go next and who we need to lend some aid to next. We really don't know, as we've kind of already seen, whether you're a veteran to this game or you're brand spanking new, they don't give you a whole lot of narrative to work with. This game is really one that if you know where you need to go and what you need to do, it's pretty straightforward and somewhat self-explanatory. But if you have no clue, it is a guessing game where you just have to talk to everyone and put all the pieces together and kind of hope for the best. But I personally don't mind that. I've always been the type of gamer who's rather enjoyed talking to NPCs, learning a little bit about the lore of the world through those conversations with characters. So I don't mind there not being just one overarching story that points you from point A to point B and then B to C, C to D, etc. I'm okay with it being a little bit more up in the air and uncertain. And maybe you'll go where you need to, maybe you'll go to the wrong place, but the information that you'll gather from the wrong place will help you backtrack to where you do need to go and kind of pick up those pieces so that you can move forward. Oh, something else I kind of want to mention. I'm entertaining the idea of turning off auto target. So you guys probably know by now that the other game in my rotation uh, for Let's Play projects right now is Luffy and the Fortress of Doom. And auto target is not a thing in that game. And it's kind of been kicking my butt and it's making me feel a little bit like a weenie that I've got the custom system set up here. Ah, so I don't know. Do I want to be a gangster and go back to the antiquated system of needing to calculate where my characters sort of focus their attacks and focus their damage? I don't know. Well, kind of, I, I might just try it because our first batch of episodes, we had auto target on. I might turn it off and just have a couple of episodes where we go back to the basics and see 
how it goes. I think this game presents enough challenge as it is. I, I personally don't love the lack of auto target, but I guess this is how the game was intended to be played, whether you want to chalk it up to limitations of the era and the system that it was released on initially, or just trolly game design. I don't know, but I'm, I'm entertaining turning this off and having... Uh, having the gameplay mechanics be as they were in the original game. We'll see. We'll see. I'll think about it, but all you guys need to know, <laughs> let's go ahead. Part ways, as I mentioned, we will hop on the ship, and when we come back together in episode number 16, we'll be ready to head westward to that brand new town that is now accessible thanks to the dwarf blowing up that little section and granting us access to a new section of the world map. But until the start of that video, everyone, take care, be good, and I, your host, Rabbit, look forward to having you join me yet again for another episode of Let's Play Through Final Fantasy Origins, specifically Final Fantasy 1 on the PlayStation 1. See you guys soon!